Joining us today is Detective Thomas Bachgalupi from the George Mason University Police Department. Department in the USA. He'll be speaking at IR's Campus and Student Security Conference, which takes place on the 23rd to 24th of May 2011 in Melbourne. Thomas, many thanks for joining us today. Thomas, why are campuses becoming dangerous places and what's the key to tackling the issue? Um, it's not that the campuses are becoming dangerous places. Uh, it's that we've seen an increase in school violence uh, here in the United States more often than other countries. Um, since 2006, we've seen school shootings increase every year. Um, however, the overall campus crime statistics to include weapons possessions, murder other than active shooters, um, sex offenses, robberies, um, arson, they've all slightly declined over the past several years. Um, I think incidents like Virginia Tech, uh, some higher education institutions are adapting awareness programs and trying to coordinate preventative measures to avoid being the next, next statistic. Um, for example, I've seen many institutions develop threat assessment teams now that consist of several campus officials to include uh, law enforcement or public safety, um, psychological services uh, to evaluate a person, a student or a person's possible threat within their campus community. And how can you build and maintain stronger relationships with the wider ca campus community? Uh, being proactive within the campus community uh, is very important. Um, I believe in the community policing style approach, not only to students, but faculty and staff as well. Um, making public safety officers approachable and visible uh, is very important. How do you develop a community partnership with staff and students? Um, you can assign several public safety officers um, to be the liaison officers that interact with the students and staff. Um, having public safety officers assigned <clears throat> just to interact uh, and be available in the student's dormitory, for example, they can build two-way communication. Um, working with the housing administrators to provide uh, an office in the housing area assigned just to the public safety department uh, can be important. Um, having those officers readily available uh, from the start, uh, from the day of move-in, um, to address concerns and questions of the residents, uh, parents as well. Um, have, the, uh, have the officers attend orientations to answer questions, um, let the students know about the liaison programs that they have, and that they're there to help and available to discuss any concerns that the students have. What are some of the innovative ways you've communicated with students with resulting success? Well, we actually have a liaison officer assigned to the dormitory areas, for example. Uh, she makes herself available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and it has been very beneficial both to the students and to our police department. Um, students are not afraid to approach and, uh, approach and talk to her, uh, for example, about maybe they have concerns about drug activity, alcohol violations, uh, weapon violations, um, even something as simple as a noise complaint. Um, she makes herself approachable. She's there. Uh, and makes yourself visible. Um, some students will they'll openly express concerns that they may see or hear within their residence. Um, another example is uh, officers who are enforcing alcohol violations. Um, and as part of their sanctions, we would make the students come in and take the alcohol awareness class taught by the police department itself. Um, the unique part about it is that the police department will provide a letter of success for the violator to take the court upon their completion of the class. Uh, this reducing their community service time and their sanctions that, that were given to them by the court. Um, it was great being able to educate students with alcohol facts and then being able to reward them for completing the class. Um, some students would really open up during the class and discuss the reason why they were there. Um, others would ask questions about their case and open a great dialogue. And even emails and thank you letters later on came uh, through the program and it was very successful over the years. What lessons can Australian campuses learn from the U.S.? Um, by coordinating and running the only higher education investigators conference in the United States, um, I've met many police officers and public safety officials from all over the world. Um, I've attended many seminars and spoken directly to investigators some of the worst U.S. school tragedies that have occurred and some of the lessons learned. Um, I plan on sharing some of these ideas and experiences uh, I've heard from those that were here uh, with the Australian higher education community uh, when I come out there. You're speaking at IIR's Campus and Student Security Conference, which takes place on the 23rd to 24th of May 2011 in Melbourne. What will be some of the key aspects that you'll be addressing in your presentation, Thomas? Um, I'll be discussing developing partnerships in the campus community to include um, students as well as faculty and staff, um, building and maintaining stronger relationships within the campus community, uh, innovative ways of communicating with students uh, and building that trust. Um, on May 25th, I'll be presenting a workshop on implementing and having the emergency response plan to cover natural disasters, hazmat, um, active shooters, hostage barricades, and civil disturbances. Detective Thomas Batchgalupi, many thanks for your time today.